Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, we've got a good old screen oh, hinge repair job to do here. This is a Dell Inspiron 15 3000, I believe. Uh, and as you can see, usual story. Yeah, just... We've all seen one of these before. So uh, I've done many of these on the channel. Not on Dells, mostly on HPs, but this is a Dell. Anyway, I'm short on repair content right now, so uh, we're going to do this. Now, this video nearly didn't start because uh, when I was looking up parts for this, I was bought parts in advance, um, I looked on eBay and I found a complete display assembly for £30 uh, with the LCD, the whole shooting match, the whole display assembly for £30. And I was like, I'm going to buy that because a replacement LCD panel is 30 quid on its own. And in ironically as well, um, the repairs that this thing needs, this thing needs new, it needs new hinges because the this bit here is snapped. Uh, and it needs a new uh, top lid, which is the back piece here, because uh, that's where everything has snapped off from. And a pair of new hinges and a new top lid, generally speaking, that's going to cost somewhere between £25 and £30 anyway. So I saw the display assembly and was like, awesome, buy one of those, because it's, you know, it's worth it for the parts, and then all I've got to do is just swap the display assemblies over, job's done. Now I forgot that I ordered an actual display assembly, and when I took it out the uh, the packaging and I saw that I'd ordered a full display assembly, I was like, oh, awesome. Well, I guess we're not going to bother recording a video on this because, the, you know, that's just swapping over a display assembly. That's not a video. But then I finished unpacking it and saw that. So, uh, yeah, that's a cracked LCD panel. And whoever, whatever idiot packs this up folded the hinges flat and packaged it up with the hinge folded against the LCD panel. And unsurprisingly, it's cracked the LCD panel. You can even see that little indent there where it's actually cracked the screen. So, good job, whoever packaged this, you idiot. So, obviously, at this point, I could just send it back and be like, dude, you moron, you cracked the display. Um, however, because it's going to cost me at least £30 to buy the... Um, top lid and stuff like that anyway, I'm actually in the standpoint, I'm like, well, I may as well actually take the LCD panel out of this one, put it in this one, and just build up a working display assembly. So here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these apart and we're going to build a good display assembly with all the parts that we now have available to us. The rest of this display assembly is actually in pretty good condition. Um, it's, it's even still got the cellophane around the edges. So this is all perfectly adequate as far as I'm concerned. Just got a busted LCD in it, which is a crying shame because originally I thought I was going to end up with a spare LCD, which would have put me almost net positive on parts. Um, but whatever. I, I'm not going to end up at a loss on this. So yeah. Anyway, let's start off by removing the old display assembly from this. Um, and uh, then we'll take everything apart and we'll build up a new display assembly. So to open this laptop up, I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to put them at the base of the panel. So my thumbs are about here and here on the other side of the screen. So then I can lift up against the hinges uh, and that way I can open up the screen without just ripping everything out of the display assembly. Um, so uh, we're going to put this to about 90 degrees and I'm going to hang it off the back of the counter. So we're now off the back of the counter, uh, like that. You get the idea. And this now enables me to work on the. This en enables me to work on the laptop while the screen is open now, which is a very handy position to put everything in. So let's pop that battery out, uh, take off the back cover, and unscrew everything. The keyboard's got to come out. Oh, bits are falling off. Oh, bits are falling off. <laughs> right. 
Right, now I'll disconnect everything going to the display assembly. And we're out. We've got another broken mount on the main body, which is not ideal. I think that'll survive. It has uh, it has some extra mounts there. I think we can work with that. Right, body to one side. So now I'm gonna take the display bezel off. So I'm just gonna wiggle this. So what I'm doing is I'm wiggling it backwards and forwards like that, just to defeat the clips. There we go, that one came off fairly easily because most of it's come off already. Oh man, it's a good thing that we're replacing the whole display assembly here because these um, these wireless antennas are... Um, there's bare copper on these wires visible. They're in really poor shape. Left side is also gone as well. Yeah, it's a good thing I really did opt to replace the entire display assembly. That wasn't part of the plan. However, I'm very glad that that's the way that this is coming down. Just would have been nice if I just had that, if that one wasn't cracked, because then I could just literally bolt that onto the laptop right now. So this display panel might look filthy, and it is filthy. However, that's not an issue. LCDs will actually clean up pretty good if you give them a little bit of TLC. Uh, so I'm not the least bit concerned about that. As soon as we get this into a, um, a built display assembly, we'll go over it with a bit of cleaning and it'll shine up like brand new. There we go, that's out. Right, we don't care about any of that. Not gonna throw it in the bin quite yet, just in case I need any bits of it. However, probably don't care about any of that. Just wipe all the bits out. Whenever you're taking laptops apart, all the little bits and grot that are just in the laptop will all fall out all over your bench. Uh, right, um, I'm going to give this thing a bit of a clean up, just bare on the on the workbench, um, because then I can get to all the panels. I'm invariably going to put loads of fingerprints all over it as I build this display back up anyway. But I'm just going to get the worst of the, the the muck off of it. Usually you can get a pretty good finish once it's built anyway, but I'm going to do this now just to demonstrate to you guys that this very grotty looking LCD is actually still perfectly viable. So this is just a Tesco window and glass, so just generic window cleaner, Windex or whatever you want to call it. And don't press on here, that's where the controller is. We're only going to press on the panel or on the frame just to hold it firm and I'm just wiping that down. And my objective is, is to get to all the edges of it, because the edges are where it's going to get covered up once it's fitted. I'm actually not at all bothered about putting marks in the middle of the panel, because I'll clean it again once we're all into the laptop anyway. I just want to get rid of any really egregious stuff. There we go. Bam. So as you can see, there's still, a, there's still a few fingerprints on the left side there. I'm not going to sterilize this because, as I say, I'll clean it again once it's in the laptop. And once it's all built into the laptop, I'll have a whole laptop to hold on to while I clean it. But as you can see, that's cleaned up to just completely sparklingly clean. No worries whatsoever. So yeah, that's ready to go into a new display assembly. Time to fix the idiot's mistake. Breaking an LCD happens. Like, I've accidentally broken LCDs many times. It happens in this job. You do it, you do any job for long enough and you'll break something sooner or later. The The thing about making mistakes is not, you know, never making a mistake is an impossible goal. Experience is how you deal with the mistakes you make. It's the ability to react to that and either fix the mistake, make good on the mistake, and if possible, implement some kind of change in the way you work that prevents you from making the mistake again. Um, however, an, an issue like this, that's just annoying because whoever folded that shut should have seen, oh, that's touching the LCD. We need additional packaging around this. You know, that's just more, that's just moronicism, if that's a word. Right, so let's take out this broken LCD. 
What annoys me is I bet that this was actually a brand new LCD as well. When we take this out, I bet I'm going to find that it's an aftermarket LCD and that the company had actually fitted it before selling it or something like that, which is just a waste of a good LCD. It certainly looks nice and clean. Oh no, it's a BOE. It's, it's the original one. Would have been nice to have that as a spare. Boohoo! What I might do at some point though with that LCD is I'll grab um, a one of my test laptops and I'll see if it still gives a picture. Because just as another interesting side point, you can see clearly on these black marks, you can see where the LCD has cracked and leaked. But the interesting thing is, is that we might have a completely clear picture between those black splots. And if we've got a completely clear picture in these areas, then that makes this a perfect tester screen because I can't sell it because it's cracked. However, it means that I won't sell my test equipment and I can plug this into laptops where I need to check if it's a, if it's a bad cable or not. Because when you have it, buying brand new parts to test with, there's always the temptation of selling them again to recoup your investment. However, when you've got parts like this, that are unsellable, however, are perfectly functional to check if a device works, these are perfect test parts. You don't have to worry about them, you just abuse them. Right, reconnect our donor LCD. There's a little bit of this LCD that's just been bent slightly. Now this is a classic moment where there could be a terrible, terrible mistake. Right, this little tab of metal here has bent down off the bottom of the panel and we need to bend that back up so it fits in. Now there's overwhelming temptation to just press down on that or just to get a screwdriver and just go blah. However, if we move ever so slightly wrong on here, we'll crack the corner of the LCD. That's exactly how mistakes happen. I've been talking about mistakes in this video. This is a mistake waiting to happen. So rather than just sit there and try and fix that in situ, I'm taking the panel back out again. We're going to do it carefully because I can see a mistake coming from a mile away there. That's exactly how mistakes happen. There we go. That's dealt with. Right, and just before I put the bezel on, I'm just going to check all these other screws as well. And I'm just going to put just a little bit of bite into all of these. Because these screws here, these ones coming loose, this is how the hinges break in the first place. These guys loosen up and then you get leverage. And as soon as there is leverage, you can rip out all of the mounts. There we go, that's fine. You don't want to graunch them super tight because you are screwing into plastic. However, you just want to try and make sure they're holding on with just a little bit of bite. Right. I mean, as you can see, I've put fingerprints all over it again, like I said I would. We'll sort that once it's all bolted onto the laptop again. Right, on goes the display assembly. And we need to figure out what orientation these wires go on. And they go under the hinges. Right, okay, main hinge screws are back in. This one I'm leaving missing because the mount for it is broken, but it's got another one there and it'll have another one through here, through the case. Uh, the giveaway for which holes we leave empty, there is actually tiny little writing. In fact, I'll give you a shot of it because I don't think I often do. So as you can see here, we've got M.2, we've got M 2.5 L8. So that's M 2.5 millimeter length eight millimeter. I don't know, length eight size with an arrow pointing to that hole. 
Same with this guy here. This hole here does not have anything pointing to it. That means this, that we do not put a screw in this hole now. That's going to have a screw that comes through the case from another location. So that's how we know which holes to populate and which to leave empty. That's our display connector and wireless antennas in. No webcam to do on this one. It's quite common on a lot of modern laptops, laptops for the webcam to be integrated into the display cable. I think these modern display connectors, I can't remember what standard they are, I believe that they have actually got a USB channel on them which enables um, the manufacturers to stick the, um, the webcam and the microphone into the display cable and it can all just run into one connector. Other laptops, you may have the display cable coming in with a little extra wire that just spurs off of it, and that'll be your webcam, which is, again, usually a USB connection. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. That's why we've only got these, these two to worry about on this laptop, though. Good. Uh, right, I think we're ready for the bottom panel. Make sure there's nothing that really needs cleaning up there. No, it's pretty clean on the inside. Not really any dust to worry about. Uh, and that fan is pretty clean as well. This is a pretty clean laptop, other than the damage. So yeah, I don't think it's had a hard life. Ah, uh, I have cocked up. I've put a screw in the wrong place here. Wah, 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 wah. Literally in a video where I told you which screw holes to put screws into, I've put a screw in the wrong hole. No matter, off comes the bottom panel again. Yes, there was no arrow pointing to that hole. There we go. One rebuilt laptop with a nice solid display. Good. So I'll go over this with the um, with the window cleaner again just to clean up the keyboard and the rest of the body, get rid of all the fingerprints on that screen. And is the battery charged? Made our noise. Hey, there we go. And there's our display. Good. Past that, we are all finished. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Stick around for the end card. All of my support links will be there. They'll also be in the description down below. That is for my uh, my Patreon, my Discord server, and also my Twitter. I've got two Twitter accounts. I've got the Adamant IT one, and there's also my personal Twitter, which is at Nethysm. And on that one, you can see any personal stuff I'm up to, including the game streams that I do on Sunday evenings and Thursday evenings, UK time. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.